recording okay welcome to robotics 2 in today's class we are going to talk about the forces and the moments on the aircraft now we will start this chapter with with a quick review of the equations of motion from chapter 3 now what i want to emphasize here when we looked at these equations and when we simulated these equations we did not take into account the effect of forces basically these guys effect of forces and then the effect of moments which is l m and n l n and m so we did not look at the effect of forces and effect of moments if you recollect all our forces were zero now in this chapter we are going to look at what are the different types of forces and moments that exist and how we control them so we will look at different types of forces forces and moments and one thing i would like to clarify if you look at these equations that are on this on this slide these equations are in terms of euler angles euler angles in other words we have uh um, yaw pitch and roll as the rotation uh, uh describing angles we can write the same equations in terms of cotonians and the analysis would be the same so what we will do is we will when we look at the matlab simulation we can actually look at the equations of motion in the euler angle form or equations of motion in the cotonian form and then we will try to implement the external forces and moments on the differential equations of motion so if you want to uh, prep yourself i would encourage you to look at the code that we discussed in last class specifically the cotonian code and try to implement the the integration of cotonians and then plot the the aircraft so uh, what i'm trying to say here is implement the uh, implement the cotonian based equations of motion and animate the aircraft because we would implement forces and moments in the next lesson and i will show you how those can be derived now quickly what type of forces act on an aircraft so if you think about it there are primarily three types of forces one is gravity so this is a gravitational force now please note the gravity is always going to be perpendicular to the the north east down so basically gravity will be down in the inertial frame so i want you to understand that this is going to be in inertial frame aerodynamic forces for an example the lift and drag they are going to be in the stability frame propulsive forces are going to be typically in the body frame and in case if you are wondering how the frame transformation goes it's always a good idea to remind ourselves an inertial frame then we have a vehicle frame then we have a vehicle one frame then we have a two frame then we have a body frame then we have a stability frame and then we have a wind frame if you look at the inertial to vertical frame no rotations there is just pure translation vertical uh, vehicle to one frame you got your translation uh, your rotation vehicle one to vehicle two you got the pitch rotation vehicle 2 to body you got roll rotation 
body to stability you got angle of attack stability to wind you got side slip so i want you to understand that even though this is a vector equation forces the forces are in different frames so fg is in this frame fa is in stability frame and fp is in body frame so dollars to dollars pesos to pesos you cannot directly add dollars to pesos which means all these forces should be in the consistent coordinate frame and the coordinate frame of choice is typically the body frame so what we do is aerodynamic forces we transfer to body frame gravitational forces we transfer to body frame and then solve the differential equation of motion and it is actually very intuitive because if you look at this set of equations pqr rotations these are also in body frame so these guys are in body frame then if you look at this guy this is nothing but the acceleration they are also in body frame now if you look at the angular acceleration this is in body frame if you look at these guys they are in body frame so it would make sense that if we could transfer all these into body frame and all these forces into body frame means all the equations are going to be consistent and again the way this happens is by using the the rotation transformations that we talked about in last few lessons so the basic idea in this chapter is look at the gravity vector look at the aerodynamic forces look at the propulsive forces transfer these forces into the body frame and then evaluate the equation of motion same thing happens over here this is these are the moments which are aerodynamic moments which is the moment uh, that that aerodynamic moment is typically in the stability frame and what you do is uh, you have propulsive forces propulsive moments this is in typically in body frame and again what i'm saying here is a conventional way of representing the different forces uh, in certain cases in some exotic airplanes or uh, in some different non standard configurations the the forces may be expressed in different plane but at the end of the day everything has to be in consistent frame that is something we should keep in mind now let's try to talk about the first force and this force is very simple this is gravity so please note this is the gravity and now this is actually if you think about it it's in along the northeast down frame so what we need to do is i just want you to look at this transformation vector transformation rotation transformation this transformation r which is r b with respect to v v is the vehicle frame which is same as the inertial frame and this gravity vector which is 0 0 mg is in north is down inertial frame and if you recollect our inertial frame assumes flat earth and we also assume that we have a north we have east and we have down and gravity vector please note it is important to note that this gravity vector has a positive sign because this gravity vector which is g is aligned with the d uh, direction it's in the down direction now it is important to observe that this rotation transformation is going to transfer the forces transform forces from the vehicle frame or the inertial frame inertial or vehicle frame to body frame 
and that means this is a standard transformation that comprises of yaw pitch and roll and this is the same transformation matrix that we have been talking about long time you have r psi multiplied by r theta multiplied by r phi and depending upon how you do it you, you have to transpose the the transformation so you have a combined transformation that would allow you to go from uh, the inertial frame all the way to body frame now if you recollect we again spend lot of time in last class to talk about the cotonian implementation or cotonian equivalent of rotation matrix so this same rotation matrix that you see over here is represented as a cotonian where e0 is the scalar magnitude you have e1 e2 e3 this is represented as ex ey and ez this is the same expression that we studied in last class and when you take a product when you take a product of this rotation matrix multiplied by this vector this rotation matrix which is expressed in cotonian multiplied by the vector this is what you get this is thing but the component of gravity in the body x frame body y frame and body z frame once again this is the component of gravity in body x plane So this is body x. This is body y and body z. Same thing happens in the Cotonian. So what we will do when we try to modify our code, we will implement the rotation matrix and the gravity vector and add that to our equations on the right hand side. the next thing i want to talk about is how do planes fly and we talked about this and the fundamental principle here is something called as kutta jotovsky theorem and if you studied thermo fluids probably you are you are introduced to this kutta jotovsky theorem but let me tell you what this theorem talks about what happens is if you have an air foil when air foil is going forward the air is flowing over the air foil and this incoming air so i want to show you this incoming air actually kind of separates at the leading edge so this is called as the leading edge and this leading edge is very critical so when you look at the aircraft wing you will see that do not step sign on the leading edge because you don't want any flow separation to take place on the leading edge that will affect the performance of the aircraft significantly so what happens is when you have the incoming air that is is flowing over the le leading edge the velocity over the top increases so you have increase in the velocity and velocity over the bottom decreases as per bernoulli's principle the total energy is constant the total energy comprises of pressure energy plus kinetic energy and then you can think about the potential energy but in this particular case we ignore potential energy so loosely speaking on top of the air foil kinetic energy decreases which means the pressure energy has to decrease decrease in pressure energy means pressure decreases over here and in the bottom of the air foil kinetic energy decreases because the velocity drops down so kinetic energy decreases pressure energy increases which means pressure increases and that's why you will notice there is something called as below static pressure and above pressure 
and what the net effect of this differential pressure is to give a lift and something i want you to understand that the pressure is always going to be perpendicular to the area so that's why if you look at this pressure vector then this is perpendicular to area 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 so in other words every small component of force will have a vertical component and a horizontal component it will have a vertical component and it will have a horizontal component a vertical component and a horizontal component and please note the resultant does not pass through the centroid of the airfoil so if this is the cg of the airfoil then the the resultant force does not pass to the cg of the airfoil what it means is the overall effect of this uneven pressure distribution and due to uneven pressure distribution on top and bottom we have a vertical force we have a horizontal force and we have a moment so vertical force is called as the lift horizontal force is called as the drag and the the moment is called as the moment and this is a very crude approximation uh, if you were to look at the aerodynamics textbook uh this concept would be explained in detail but from roboticist point of view i want you to understand because of this unique shape of the airfoil when airfoil is in the free air stream the pressure over the airfoil and the pressure below the airfoil they are different because of that the 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 resultant force is resolved into a lift force a drag force and a moment and please understand this lift force drag force and moment is dependent on quite a few factors one important factor is angle of attack and it is customary to consider these forces at something called as the quarter chord length chord length means the length from here to here so this is called as the chord so it is customary to consider these forces at a quarter chord and lift force drag force and moment are the aerodynamic forces that cause airplane to fly and uh, airplane for an example airplane to stop now one thing i want you to understand and this is a simple thought exercise that you can do consider that there is this is the free stream of air this is the air free stream and say if you have a surface just a plain surface slightly shape uh, may not be a flat plate but a, a plate like this you would realize that as you increase the angle of attack as you increase the angle of attack the lift force on this plate type shape would increase at certain angle of attack the lift force would dr drop down and the drag force would increase okay nominal static pressure all right since you asked static pressure now what is this concept of static pressure and i want you to visualize this simple experiment and this is just a flowing water okay this is just a flowing water and what you have is you have a tube this tube 
is something like this open at bottom end open at top end and what you do is you submerge this tube in this free stream this is free stream means this is not blocked this is free stream you would observe that if this is the water level if this is the atmospheric level the water here raises by some amount and the reason for that is what happens here is you have some kinetic energy plus some pressure energy or and what happens is when this moving fluid comes in contact with the stationary tube this tube is stationary then this tube is stationary all of a sudden kinetic energy drops down because the tube is stationary so the fluid loses all the kinetic energy that kinetic energy gets converted to pressure energy and that is noted over here this delta h is because the kinetic energy gets converted to pressure energy and that is seen as h times rho times g now so some of you may ask me then uh, how is this related so if you look at the equation for kinetic energy which is 1 half v square which is equal to h times rho times g and what you can do is uh, from this you can derive the equation for static pressure simply put static pressure is when the total energy is converted to the pressure energy and the equivalent pressure that is measured is called as the static pressure and this is an important parameter and if you dens they usually have something called as pitot static tube that is used for measurement of air speed and we use the static pressure principle now to give an idea typically the static pressure would be somewhere over here now i just want to tell you why that is and again i am not an aerodynamicist but i will try to give you a basic roboticist explanation the fluid is coming in contact with the surface over here and at that point the fluid loses all its uh, kinetic energy and then that kinetic energy gets converted to potential energy and then you will have a variation of that on the top and as well as the bottom of the airplane a uh, airfoil so that's why this the the pressure the static pressure is very important concept and we will see in the next slide that we will use this concept again to find out the total lift and drag force on the airfoil now the next thing what i want to talk about is just think about this quantity 1 half uh rho va square and this is nothing but the pressure quantity that we just talked about if you look at the dimension of this quantity rho is nothing but the density density is nothing but mass divided by a, a volume cube so this gives you the pressure s is the area and l is the coefficient of lift so uh, cl is the coefficient of lift similarly cd is the coefficient of drag and these coefficient of lifts and coefficient of drag they are determined using something called as the wind tunnel testing
and for different airfoil shapes coefficient of lift and coefficient of drags are already published so whenever you are going to design what you do is you look at the design data book for the airfoil and then select appropriate values of coefficient of lift and coefficient of drag however here is something i want to tell you there are three quantities so you have this is the pressure quantity this is the area and this is coefficient of drag similarly again this is one half rho v square this is the area and this is the the coefficient of moment and c is nothing but the chord length so what i want you to understand is f lift f drag and m they are dependent on air foil geometry and they are dependent on the the air velocity va so whatever is the air incoming air velocity or also called as air speed it depends upon the air speed one important observation before we proceed any further is i want you to notice the frame please note this is body frame this is body frame now if you look at the the va that is expressed in the stability frame now va is expressed in the stability frame and what has happened in this particular case is a uh, lift force and drag force which is dependent on va is expressed in the stability frame as well this is very important observation and i want you to note this and again depending upon the the textbook that you are going to follow or depending upon the analysis that you are going to follow you can potentially put these forces in different frames and transfer them from one frame to other frame but in this particular uh, uh, formulation please note air foil is shown in the body frame air foil is shown in the body frame but the aerodynamic forces are expressed in stability frame aerodynamic forces are expressed in stability frame so these are in stability frame and then what we do is we use the rotation transformation based on angle of attack use the rotational transformation based on angle of attack to transfer or or rotate these forces drag and lift into the body frame one thing i want to clarify that is about the moment now if you look at the moment moment is aligned if you look at the moment moment is aligned with respect to uh the the j axis i want you to understand this this is very carefully the j axis of the body frame and j axis of the stability frame is coming out through this so j body and j stability is aligned and the moment this moment is about the jb and js but there is a simple and important distinct uh, distinction that i want you to be absolutely clear about it is subtle but i want you to be absolutely clear about and let me show this in a three dimensional way so what i'm trying to say here will be clear so consider that this is the right side wing this is the right side wing okay which means you have the plane over here you have the plane over here the plane has a tail over here and it the plane's nose is somewhere over here nose and tail okay now i want you to understand what this is interpreting 
So you have an axis, which is JB, and you have an axis, JS, both of them are aligned. And what you have here is, please note, if you look at alpha, which is the angle of attack, please notice this alpha, if you consider this alpha, the angle of attack in, is in clockwise direction. What it means is the angle of attack, when you view that in the body and stability frame, this angle of attack is negative. So when you view this in the stability frame, the angle of attack is in, it's in, yeah, F lift, uh, to answer Zubir's question, F lift and F drag are in stability frame. And what we are doing is we are using the angle of attack rotation transformation to convert F drag and F lift into body frame. However, there is a subtle difference that I want you to be absolutely clear about. If you look at the angle of attack, angle of, if you curl your fingers in the direction of angle of attack, and I want you to do this, curl your fingers, right hand, in the direction of angle of attack. AOA means angle of attack. You will notice your thumb is going to point towards the opposite J direction. Once again, if you curl your fingers in the direction of angle of attack, you will notice that your thumb will point towards the negative JB and JS. That's why when you look at this guy, alpha is actually substituted as minus alpha. And that means that's why you have a sign change at the off diagonal terms. So please notice since angle of attack, the sign convention for angle of attack is opposite of the coordinate frame that we are using. That's why you have uh, the, the minus signs are flipped. To answer Zubir's question one more time, the airfoil, airfoil is in body frame. What it means, because airfoil is attached to the body. What it means is if you look at the cord, quarter cord, that is aligned with the IB. So the airfoil is in body frame, but since the velocity of air or air speed is shown in the stability frame, and I'll repeat this again, this is shown in stability frame, the lift and drag force, lift and drag force, they are expressed in stability frame. Does it make sense? That's why you will notice that this drag force is aligned with I, I, S and lift force is aligned with K, S. Clearly they are in the negative direction. That's why you have these negative signs over here because these forces are opposite to positive I, S and positive K, S. Does that answer your question, Zubir? Okay, moving on. But once again, depending upon the type of aircraft that you that you are studying, it may be it may so happen that uh, these forces could be expressed in different coordinate frame. But one thing that I want you to notice is always remember this transformation: inertial to vehicle, vehicle to vehicle one, vehicle one to vehicle two, vehicle two to body, to stability to wind. And then wherever the forces are defined, you can actually uh, track them for back or forth. Because you will see in the next few lessons that this shows you a very simple two-dimensional planar representation of the forces. But air velocity, to be honest with you, 
is not going to be around the plane of the airfoil. And if you look at the forces in three dimensions, or if you look at a very complicated um, aircraft structures, then you will have a very complicated force pattern. But nevertheless, you have to make sure dollars to dollars, pesos to pesos, everything needs to be expressed in the body coordinate system so that we can solve this equation. So this should be in the body coordinate system uh, and this also should be in the body coordinate system. Any other question before I go further? Okay, next thing is all these forces are great, but how do we control an airplane? Now here is a very simple conventional idea. If you look at an airplane and I'm gonna show you the front view of the plane. Okay, I'm gonna show you the front view of the plane. Here is the very simple concept. This is the front view of the plane and you have wings here. This is the nose. And this is a tail. So the tail is in the back, nose in the front. So you have wings on the left hand side. I'm going to call this wing on the left hand side of the airplane, wing on the right hand side of the airplane. If I increase the amount of lift, if I increase the amount of lift, and if I decrease the amount of lift here, then you would realize that this plane is going to rotate or roll or bank. So if I change the lift on one side, on the left side of the wing and on the right hand side of the wing, then this is going to bank or roll. So roll and bank, they are commonly used terms in the case of airplanes. So bank means roll. So as you can see, what you have is you have something called as aileron. And conventional planes will have ailerons, they will have flaps, they have trim tabs, and they will have a lot of stuff. But from a basic point of view, what you have is you have these ailerons. Ailerons are like hinge flaps. So you have a hinge over here, you have a hinge over here, and then you have hydraulic actuators. They physically move the ailerons, uh, rotate the ailerons. The effect of change in the aileron angle is changing the amount of if total lift on the, the wing. And if the, the wing has differential lift, the airplane would roll. If the lift on the both side of the wing is same, the airplane would remain in a level flight. It's not going to roll. It will continue to go straight. So ailerons cause airplane to bank or rotate. So, and that is shown over here. So delta A results in the roll rate. Again, please note, roll rate is P. Then if you look at uh, Q is the pitch rate. And R is the yaw rate. And once again, I this is important at this point again to remind ourselves of the coordinate system. The coordinate system is you have X, you have Y, and you have Z. This is north, this is east, this is down. This is P, this 
this is Q and this is R. And what I'm showing you here is nothing but the body frame of the aircraft. So this is the body frame. So I want you to absolutely understand that the roll rate, pitch rate, and yaw rate, which is P, Q, R, are about the body frame. And the body frame in Northeast town coordinate system is shown over here. Now, what happens is there is something called as a, a rudder. And this is the rudder. And there is something called as elevator. So aileron controls the roll. So I'll, I'll still write down here, aileron controls the roll. Elevators control the pitch and rudder controls the yaw. So in a conventional airplane, in a conventional airplane, you will have three control surfaces, aileron to control the roll. R goes, no, you're right. R does not go opposite. I made a mistake. R. Yeah, R, uh, roll pitch and yaw. Yeah, ailerons are in front wing. Also, there is something else I wanna talk about. There are two types of configuration. One is called as the pusher aircraft and the other one is called as the puller aircraft. So for an example, this configuration, the prop or the propeller is in front. So prop in front. This is called as puller configuration. And if the prop propeller is placed in the back, if the prop is placed in the back, then it is called as the pusher configuration. And we'll talk about it. Now, what rudder does, the rudder is this guy. It's hinge around the vertical plane. And then, so what you will see is this, this rudder, is a sort of a flap, vertical flap that can go left and right. And depending upon whether it goes left or whether it goes right, it applies a torque about the Z direction that causes the aircraft to yaw. And the last control surface is the elevator. The purpose of the elevator is the same thing. You have a control surface at the end of the airplane. And then what happens is this control surface is hinged and you will have servos that will change the orientation of this control surface and it will change the effective total lift on the plane. And what that means is the plane could pitch up or it could pitch down depending upon the, the elevator orientation. Now, the question that uh, Ghazi asked here is uh, ailerons in the, are in the front wing and never see it go the other way. And to be honest with you, that is a correct observation. You will never see ailerons in the, the big planes go by the way it is shown over here because a teeny tiny change in the aileron deflection is sufficient to create the roll. And please note, you are in the passenger plane. You are not in the fighter plane. So your plane is not going to do 360 degree roll. The maximum it will do is it will do a coordinated turn, wherein you will have aileron and other control surfaces acting together. So since you are, if you are not in acrobatic maneuver, you will never see ailerons going up and down by a huge amount the changes in the aileron deflection will be very minimal. As a matter of fact, 
change in the elevator deflection will also be very small because it takes very teeny tiny amount of deflection to cause the aircraft to pitch up pitch down your left your right or roll right and roll left if you look at if you are into rc planes and if you are into aero um, acrobatic maneuvers of rc planes i would encourage you to go and take a look at youtube you will see those rc planes doing very complex maneuvers and in those cases you will see these ailerons and all these control surfaces going through large deflection does not does that answer your question gazi okay now the next before we go to uh, the fixed wing or the zagi airplane i just want everyone to have a very clear understanding of the control surfaces because uh, you need to understand the the effect of the control surfaces on the dynamics so that we can actually simulate the the flight dynamics correctly okay to answer borna's question do these movement create more drag absolutely now i want to tell you something else i don't know if you have seen on the big planes what you have is you have flaps over here on the actual airplanes and when the aircraft is coming to a stop these flap open up what it does it changes the angle of attack significantly that causes tremendous amount of drag on the skin of the aircraft and aircraft breaks clearly when you have a deflection of ailerons or deflection of rudder in addition to the variation in the lift drag and movement also gets changed and all these are interrelated that's why you will see in the next slide when we write down the equation for cl cd they will they will incorporate all these different control surfaces for the elevator and rudder with the positive as drawn wouldn't they rotate in the opposite direction of oh never mind okay all right yeah so to answer alejandro's question yes zagi airplane is a pusher prop is a pusher configuration and we will talk about it in the next in that slide number 10 but before we do that i want you to understand how do we implement this control surface in the flight so for an example overall delta which is overall aileron deflection is considered as a uh, a uh, the difference between delta a left aileron deflection left minus delta a right and half of it that will be considered when we actually look at the simulation now i want to take a slightly different example which is something called as the v tail and i don't know if you have seen this v tail airplane uh, but let me show you how this looks it does not have a single vertical tail and if this is the front view of the plane left wing right wing and it has two tails so basically tail 1 and tail 2 and i want you to see this the differently compared to the previous one where there was only one tail there was only one tail and here instead of one tail you have two tails so what happens in this case is basically we combine control surfaces so for an example aileron they remain as is again this is a puller configuration which means the prop is in the front and what happens is you have the deflection of the right rudder and deflection of the left rudder and clearly it changes whether you are looking from front or looking from left or right so assuming you are standing here this or if, sorry assuming you are standing here not here this is your right this is your left so this is right rudder and this is left 
and then on this rudder you have a hinge on this rudder you have a hinge and you have these flaps and the idea is if both the flaps move in the same direction if both the flaps move in the same direction you have same effect as the elevator if both the flaps move in the same direction you have something called as the effect same effect as elevator if both these flaps move in opposite direction what you have is you have the effect of rudder and now i want you to understand that there is a subtle concept over here that the deflections it is something that i want you to note so you have the right rudder you have the left rudder there are actually four combinations possible you can have right rudder go in plus direction left rudder can go in minus direction left rudder can go in minus direction right rudder can go in positive direction and then last but not least is both the rudders could go in positive direction and both the rudders could go in negative direction now i want you to visualize the way these are moving and the easiest way to imagine these moving is look at the way how the deflections are indicated positive so i want you to curl your finger the direction of rotation that gives you the axis of rotation so it is important to note that the axis of rotation axis of rotation for this guy is in this direction and the axis of rotation for this guy is shown over here actually yeah so i want you to understand that with these four combinations what you can have is you can have and please note you can have positive uh yaw you can have negative yaw you can have positive uh pitch and negative pitch and ailerons take care of roll so in v configuration this is and actually this is called as mixing and this mixing can be done multiple ways if you are into rc planes this mixing can be done in the transmitter if you have a futaba or some other transmitter multiple channel transmitter you can mix these control surfaces or if you have an autopilot like pick hawk you can select a particular plane configuration and it will do the mixing automatically the other thing i want you to be aware of is these deflections may not be same and the reason for that is the weight of the aircraft may not be symmetrically distributed for the if the aircraft weight is balanced in that case you will notice that you can have symmetric deflections but almost all the times the aircraft is not perfectly balanced at its cg balancing an aircraft itself is a is a, ta a tactful exercise in that case you will have something called as the trim tabs which compensate for that unbalanced movement and the the motion of the prop because of the newton's third law gives you unbalanced movement on the aircraft so you have uh, trim tabs that compensate for these unbalanced movements so that when in the level flight just with control surfaces the aircraft can do uh, can pitch roll and yaw okay any questions about the v tail moving on this is the flying wing 
this is same this is also called as zagi this is the same plane that we used for simulation and please note this is a pusher configuration which means the prop is at the end now you will observe two interesting things this zagi has something called as winglets this is called as the winglet this is also called as winglet winglet are needed for stability of this airframe winglets are needed for the stability of this airframe and now what i want you to understand is zagi airplane only has two control surfaces so this is one control surface and this is the other control surface and the change in the elevator or if you have these two control surfaces moving in the same direction you will have the effect as pitch or you will have elevator if you uh, have these uh, control surfaces moving opposite it will same effect as aileron now i want you to notice that zagi airplane does not do a very sharp turn what it means is you will never see a zagi airplane doing a very sharp turn zagi airplane will always do a coordinated turn which is the combination of uh, pitching and rolling and that will cause the airframe to turn but the advantage of this frame is there are just two control surfaces and this is very easy to build and i just want to tell you in 2008 in 2008 we built the first autonomous zagi plane and if you want to see uh, and that project was supported by katta technologies and that airframe is still in the sim building with its primitive autopilot we successfully added a video camera did the feed and we showed the the successful autonomous flight but the the autopilot or the platform that we used is called paparazzi this was way before ardu pilot and pickhawk were in market so ardu pilot and then pickhawk so all these autopilots came in 2010 so you are welcome to go to simulator building and this the aircraft that we built in 2008 i believe it was one of the first attempts at asu to build autonomous uh, airplanes and i just if you are super interested in the aer aircraft dynamics aero elasticity i'm going to give you the names of two faculty who are experts in uh, aircraft systems probably you know them professor rajdas and professor nam so if you have any question in uh, okay what is the difference between putting in the puller and back of the zagi instead of putting in the front well it depends upon the airflow characteristics because the idea is whenever you have airflow going over the the control surfaces you do, do not want any type of separation on the control surfaces and that has the pusher or puller configuration has to uh, has to do has to deal with the ease of control the range of the aircraft the type of aircraft and maneuverability and this question is a classic aircraft design question and the right person to ask this question would be professor nam and he can explain to you now another question that you may ask me is why the prop the motor is on the top and not at the bottom and there are design uh, uh, variations possible but with those design variations there come there comes trade off 
So what you need to do is you need to look at the flow. You need to look at the flow separation. You need to look at the weight distribution. You need to look at the uh, the actual air flow through the prop and all that stuff to actually determine where the control surfaces should be, where the prop should be, what should be the prop size, and all other aircraft design parameters. So there, there are courses on aircraft design. Well, you can, you're welcome to look at YouTube wherein uh, people have attempted to modify this airframe with adding multiple props or adding props at different locations and so on. Okay, so there are um, exotic uh, airplanes. I mean, if you look at VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing, you have stop rotor configurations. That is something that we worked on long time ago, wherein you have a, a helicopter that takes into the shape of an airplane, take vertically, then you have something called as a uh, short takeoff and landing, wherein something like a Harrier, and there are uh, exotic types of airplanes, X-plane and other different configurations that are built and used and tested. And you're welcome to look at Wikipedia that will tell you different, different configurations of the aircrafts. Now let's go back and see what we are trying to do. The objective, main objective of this chapter is trying to solve these equations of motion where we express forces and movements uh, using the, the equations for uh, prop, equations of aerodynamic forces and equation and, and value of gravity. So quick recap, when we talk about aircraft dynamics, we are going to talk about two types of dynamical analysis. One is the aircraft dynamics in the sagittal plane, which is also called as longitudinal plane. And this longitudinal plane is, let me show you. So if you have this aircraft, if you have this aircraft, this is a longitudinal plane. So what we are going to look at is we are going to look at up down motion. This is also called as the pitch plane. And other plane is the yaw plane or the side plane. And this plane actually looks something like this. So and this in this plane, we will study the side by side motion or turning motion, essentially yaw, roll, roll rate, yaw rate, and so on. So aircraft dynamics, uh, a simple aircraft dynamics uh, is studied in the longitudinal plane and the lateral plane. So this is called as the lateral plane. This is called as longitudinal plane. Now, first, what we are going to do is we will look at the aerodynamics in the longitudinal plane. And just to give you a quick idea, aerodynamics is the topic of PhD research and beyond. So I'm going to give you a very simple introduction to aerodynamics, but you are welcome to, welcome to study books. And there are courses on Coursera and on YouTube. You are welcome to study aerodynamics on your own. I will be talking about aerodynamics from the roboticist point of view. So what I want to emphasize here is when we talk about aerodynamics, we are trying to look at lift force, drag force, and the moment. And lift force, drag force, and moment is studied in the pitch plane. And this pitch plane is nothing but IB, the, it's nothing but the body. I, B, J, B, and K, B type of plane. Now, this longitudinal aerodynamics is influenced by angle of attack. Angle of attack is the angle made by the airfoil with respect to incoming air. So that is called as angle of attack. And it is also influenced by the pitch rate 
and elevator deflection once again what we are going to study is we are going to study the aerodynamics for the conventional airplane so please understand that we have a separate control surface as elevator we have a separate control surface as aileron and we have a separate control surface as rudder so when you look at the effect you have something called as the dynamic pressure this is the pressure quantity this is the area and this is the coefficient of lift this coefficient of lift is dependent on three parameters this is angle of attack aoa is angle of attack q is the pitch rate and delta e is the elevator deflection and once again it is instructive to look at the the coordinate frame so please note we are talking about the pitch rate and this is the pitch rate this is q so this is the pitch rate and this is this is the elevator deflection this is the def elevator deflection and the angle of attack is nothing but the angle made by the air foil with respect to incoming air stream so this guy is the angle of attack so the point here to be noticed is coefficient of lift coefficient of drag and coefficient of movement these are non dimensional coefficient so 0.1 point 0.2 point 0.3 point 0.4 point something like that they are dependent on angle of attack pitch rate and elevator deflection and that is common for all of these how do we find out the actual value of cl cd and cm that is done by experimental aerodynamics wind tunnel testing and computational fluid dynamics but as far as we are concerned for us cl is a function cl is a function that gives me the output as a number a, a, a number coefficient that is dependent on the angle of attack pitch rate and elevator deflection one thing i want you to notice that pitch rate and elevator deflection and for that matter angle of attack are varying quantities which means depending upon where the control surface is value of angle of attack value of instantaneous pitch rate value of instantaneous elevator deflection is going to be different what it means is the instantaneous lift instantaneous drag and instantaneous movement is going to be different everyone understood this so these are the three quantities that we study when we talk about longitudinal aerodynamics now what i want to do is i want to take an approximate approach before we go further and we will talk about the big long equation that uh, indicates the draft i mean the uh, the alpha q and delta e so it's a very complicated equation so equation for cl if you look at cl cl is a very complicated function of alpha q and delta e if you look at cd is a very complicated function of alpha q and delta e and if you look at cm it's a very long on complicated function of alpha q and delta e what we want to do is we want to linearize this equation now what do i mean by linearization and we talked about it in robotics 1 but i just want to give you an idea if you look at a nonlinear function say if you have a nonlinear function like this this is a nonlinear function which means the relationship between the output and input is not a straight line but you will observe if i take a very teeny tiny region 
this can be approximated as a straight line if i take another teeny tiny region here this can be approximated as straight line so linearization is nothing but approximating the curve by a straight line and now i want you to understand what is happening here there are three parameters so you have alpha you have q and you have delta e so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write something called as the jacobian and will give me uh, the change of cl with respect to change in alpha change of cl with respect to change in pitch rate change of cl with respect to change in the elevator deflection and that equation is given over here now this needs a little discussion what i'm trying to say here is just imagine for the sake of discussion that my elevator deflection is constant so i'm going to assume that my delta e is equal to 0 and i want you to visualize a three dimensional plane something like this so you have a plane which is somewhere over here now this i'm going to call as this is my cl this is cl and i have this here alpha and i have this here as q so what this surface gives me surface gives me the variation of relationship between the variation of alpha and variation of q if i keep as i keep the value of q constant these lines if i keep the value of q constant the horizontal lines sort of they give me the variation with respect to alpha and that is nothing but this guy if i look at this surface if i look at this these lines this grid this gives me this is that value but since this relationship is not three dimensional actually you have three parameters so cl you can visualize cl is something like a hyperplane where you have alpha q and delta e simultaneously affecting the value of cl and this is the the initial approximation in the the taylor series expansion so the initial value so if you think about it this is nothing but a taylor series expansion and this first order approximation is good for preliminary analysis and i just want to tell you that this is intimately related with the concept of jacobian that we studied in uh, robotics 1 so you will observe that once we have the equation for lift drag and movement all these equations can be written clearly as jacobian how is it related to jacobian good question since you asked i'm going to give you a simple expression cl is function of f1 alpha uh then you have q and delta e you have cd f2 alpha q delta e and then you have cm which is f3 alpha q delta e now what i want to do is i want to find out delta cl which is nothing but partial f1 by partial alpha by the value of delta alpha plus partial f1 by partial q delta q plus partial f1 by partial delta e delta e you will do delta cd same thing partial f2 by alpha delta alpha plus partial f2 by delta q delta q plus partial f2 by delta e delta delta e partial cm partial f3 
delta alpha plus partial f3 delta q delta q plus partial f3 delta e delta e now if you think about it what this is if i write this equation is partial f1 partial alpha partial f1 partial q partial f1 partial delta e partial f2 partial alpha partial f2 partial q partial f2 this is f1 sorry this is f1 f2 delta e partial f3 alpha partial f3 delta q partial f3 delta e multiplied by delta alpha delta q and delta e this guy is nothing but delta cl delta cd and delta cn this guy is by definition is the jacobian and you will have the exact same equation in robotics you have the velocities u v w robotics one multiplied by you will have the jacobian and you will have the joint angles theta 1 dot theta 2 dot theta 3 dot or delta theta 1 delta theta 2 delta theta t this is something that we do in robotics one uh, robotic uh, uh, hand dynamics that's it for today and i'm going to stop here and i will continue the discussion in next class but if you have any questions i would be happy to answer